Dear girls, good morning. First of all, I want to thank all the female speakers and all the female participants. So we have people from politics, business, sports, art, and also we have friends from different countries, different industries. So we find a lot of commonality out of them. They have the unique girl power. They can make the world even better. They can other make other people happier. They can make the world full of hope. So when I sit down there, I feel a lot of warmth and kindness. I feel a unique wisdom. That's why every time I'm very honored that we can provide to women entrepreneurs and women leaders with a sharing platform. It's a pity for the first global conference on women and entrepreneurship, I only invited myself as the only male participant. That's why I was given the first opportunity to be the only men during the first global conference on women and entrepreneurship. But this time we have 10% men here. I want to thank you for your invitation so that we can have the opportunity to participate in this event, listening to you and feel your power. And we can feel more responsibility to help more women. All the men are the volunteers and staff for this event. So we are very honored to have this opportunity to serve the women. I always hope I've said that that I want to be a woman in my next life. I want to have a group of children. So that would feel very good. I also feel a lot of women have very good ideas what to do. As you have said, a lot of people want to have children with me. So females are very inclusive, but men are very different. I really like what um, uh, an online friend said that, so it's difficult for you to find a, a boyfriend when you look like this. I think that men and women are very different. Women are very inclusive and men are very jealous. So when I hear the Yen said, we are not, our look, and have the beauty which is not recognized by the general public. Actually, men need more and more confidence in this world. So men are very arrogant, but I think for the future world, the dominating power of marriage will be determined by females instead of men. I think we already see that trend. So. How about data already shows us in today's world, so men are also using concealers and mascara cream. Their purchase volume has increased by double. So if men do not make them look better and be more educated and more civilized, they wouldn't be accepted, accepted by the women. They wouldn't be able to get married. I also want to have the honor to uh, work together as an advocate of SDG goals of the United Nations. In the past three and a half years, I'm very honored to work with people from different sectors in the world to promote sustainable growth. United Nations has set the goals that by 2030, we're going to achieve a more beautiful and more sustainable world to promote 17 sustainable development goals with significant progress. And among the 17 SDG goals, the fifth one is gender equality. This is also something I take most care of, and I believe this is the most important thing for the 21st century for the survival of the mankind. Since the establishment of Alibaba, 
women have been playing a very important role for our entrepreneurship. So we can see the women entrepreneurs and women leaders are the most uniquely charming leaders. So objectively speaking, in e-commerce field, females are more advantaged compared with male. Of course, we're not here today to talk about Alibaba. I hope that together with us, we can promote gender equality in different fields, different industries worldwide with our joint efforts. Four years ago, when we had the first global conference on women and entrepreneurship, our idea was very simple. We just hope that we can bring all the women entrepreneurs from the world together so that you can have a communicating platform and the people will be able to feel the power of the women. But in recent years, the world has gone through significant changes, no matter in terms of technology, trade, and world layout. Everything is changing. While the world is changing, we find that many men cannot adapt to that. But there's no problem with women, because women are born to adapt to changes. They like changes. They embrace changes. A lot of women are good at creating changes. Today, everyone is talking about artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, talking about different kinds of technologies. People believe technology era is dominated by males. But at Alibaba, we don't believe that way. Females account for 13% among our technical staff. That's true. But 51% of our designers, almost half of our product testers are females. So we have a product called Timo Genie. The code of Timo Genie was written by male engineer, but females are responsible for designing and training the codes. Even in the robotic world, women are still the ones that are deciding the criteria for beauty. A lot of people are saying that females are more sensitive to colors. Some people are also saying that female can detect the sun range wider than males. I think the most important thing is that females focus more on user experience. Men focusing a lot on themselves. Females are focusing a lot on others, on the family, on the husband, on the children, on the colleagues. Females can feel how the others are feeling. They are better at communicating. They have better understanding of beauty. So these are the important things for female success. Men is good at conquering, and women are good at guarding. 90% of the artificial intelligence are using female voice, and even the gender setting is female. So we are afraid of machines in the world. We are afraid of the robot or artificial intelligence. No one wants to be conquered by the artificial intelligence, but everyone wants to be safeguarded by the artificial intelligence, which is gender and soft. I think if the female can participate in the future world's product design, the world progress will be even better for the next 30 years. We're no longer competing about the muscles and power. We're competing about wisdom and experience. So in the experience era, females will be better and better because they are better at serving others, understanding others, and supporting others. We find when men are doing business, they focus a lot on figures, while females, when they're doing business, they focus a lot on experience. In the digital era, focus on experience would be easier to succeed. When we look at Taobao, female store owners transaction volumes growth in the last few years is 30% higher than male store owners. And also, 80% of the live streams on Taobao live broadcasting are females. A lot of people believe it's very normal because live streaming is a world of young beauties. You need to earn money by 
awards. But actually, for the live streamers, we have post 60s and also post 2000s. We even have old women above 100 years old. So you can check out their live broadcasting. They are very beautiful, but they are also very hardworking. They succeed because of their understanding of the product, their insight of the users, and also their communication with the users. That's why they are successful. I believe in this world, only when the women are better, the world will be better. First of all, without women, there will be no Alibaba. We have half, in the past we had half of the employees that are female, but now it's not so good. One week ago, we had a meeting in suburbs in Shanghai. We found that after acquiring several companies, the female percentage had dropped a lot, but luckily the percentage of female leaders is still 35, 34%. So we have already been alerted to the drop of the female percentage drop. I said that we have to set up an alarming line. So when the, the female percentage is below 33%, and we need to take that a very important KPI, we shouldn't be make that lower than 33%. So we need to try all means to promote the roles of females. This is not what Alibaba is trying different methods to provide our job opportunities for females. It's because when we have less women, Alibaba wouldn't be successful. It's because females have created the success of Alibaba. It's because of the confidence and trust of females. That's why Alibaba is different. I also had another observation. So for one company, the percentage of the females will determine whether the company will be able to be successful, sustainable. So it's proportional. You can make such observation. It's very interesting for Alibaba. In the beginning, we had a very good gender equality. But then when we have more engineers, our performance was reducing. It's not as fast as before. Why? Because when we have more male engineers, they think about things logically. They are not thinking about the user experience. So when we have more female employees, the company's products and service would definitely be unique. It would always be centered around the users. And females are also making their homes more cozy and beautiful. We are always advocating double H. One is health, the other is happiness. I think when you live, there are two important things. One is health, the other is happiness. But we're also talking about triple H now. Health, happiness, and home. On the online shopping platform, 65% of the products are purchased by females. So I believe that women are not just spending, they also love, it's just because they love their homes. The women need to take care of their husbands and children before they consider about themselves. But most of the men are self-centered. So on Taobao, Nearly half of the men's wear are purchased by females. 60% of the home supplies are purchased by females. So life supplies and study supplies for children are purchased, 60 to 70% are purchased by females. So females love their families and they're full of love. So we see more than 65% of females purchasing from charity stores. So the understanding of the loyalty is also different. Even for our Huawei, which is a, a credit uh, card system, uh, female users pay back their credit loans more often and they also make better use of uh, the credit uh, service. 
if you look at uh, loan uh, repayment uh, and uh, loan servicing rate, uh, female is 27 percent greater than male users. So indeed, the world would be a much better place if we are all like uh, women. And I also believe that when women are strong, mothers are strong. Uh, and when mothers are strong, kids are strong. And when kids are strong, society is strong. I think the better educated mothers are, the better the kids are, the better the structure uh, of knowledge is for the society. Now uh, we have uh, more women educated in university than male in China. I think uh, women are uh, less uh, in a hurry to be, uh, succeed and they take their time and they're able to achieve great success. 50% uh, of new internet startups are created by uh, women. I believe that the world needs more leaders, more uh, female ministers, uh, and I even advocate to the UN that we should uh, uh, love to see, we would love to see a female a general secretary soon. Indeed, women's decision-making process is more inclusive and more prudent. Uh, men make decisive decisions, but sometimes they are headstrong. I've worked with uh, many, many uh, leaders, men and women, in at Alibaba, and this is my personal take, indeed. I think this is something that I tell not only uh, women, uh, but also men, uh, uh, and I, uh, I say that if you want to be successful in uh, business, you need to have female leaders because that makes the world a better place, a uh, more caring place, a more inclusive place. The world needs to be developed by both men and women. With balance between men and women, the world will become a better place. This uh, today's world needs good leadership, female leadership in particular. Uh, women uh, think with their right brain more than uh, uh, men. And when you think only with your left, uh, left hemisphere, you get controlled by uh, reason. Uh, but uh, right hemispheric thinking is uh, more intuitive. I think the world, uh, if you look at the products, the technologies, even the robotics, I think uh, are going to be where intuition uh, is more important because that's how humans retain its su uh, supremacy over robotics in the future. Intuition is what machines cannot learn. Well, I think men know the world, women know the heart. And if you, I think you all have an intuitive sense of that because it's uh, easier to lie to the dad than to lie to the mom or to hide something from the mom. It's very difficult because mom think intuitively uh, and they know. So I think we really need a balance between yin and yang. Uh, when the balance is not achieved, more often than not, it is when you, uh, women are not given enough weight. If you want to do something, uh, maybe you need men. If you want to achieve greater success, you need women. If you want to do things, though, elegantly, you need men and women in perfect balance. I think different levels of achievements and indeed that caps how I believe the world is going to be a better place with the balance that I advocate. I think uh, girls and women, they present represent the peace of the world, the beautiful things in the world, and you're committed. I think you're the 
uh, exceptional uh, part of the world. Uh, man can be everything, but without women, they're nothing. So I really want to thank you. Thank you so much. And I wish that in my afterlife, I would be a woman and a woman and a good woman as such, uh, so that I can contribute also in to the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please uh, stay on the stage. Uh, maybe uh, we can connect to our venues uh, globally. Jakarta, Indonesia. Hello, Jakarta. What is your question? Yeah, so what's the question? Uh, hello, Jakarta. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, that's when... Uh... Yes, yes. Hello, my name is Nilam. I'm from Indonesia. And I want to ask, uh, what does it take for women entrepreneurs like us, especially uh, all of the women entrepreneurs, uh, to break the ceiling, especially in the digital and also in the innovative era like now? This, because it's quite a challenge for all of us right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <clears throat> well, it's a challenge. The digital time is a challenge to everybody, not only to women, but also to men. Everybody scared, worried. But when you scared, if you're scared, worried, this thing come. If you don't scare, don't worry, this thing come. The thing to do it is to embrace it, to change yourself. Because this digital world is coming, it's a challenge to everybody. And I think women can do better jobs. My point is that when we talk about data, when we talk about digital, a lot of people are thinking about how I can make money. How can I be successful by becoming a data company? But not everybody can do that job. But most people should think about how can I leverage it? How can I use the data? How can I use the internet to be happier? to help other people to be successful and more successful and happier. So, past 30 to the years, those people who focus on technology will be successful. Next 30 years, those people using the technology to help others, those are the people will be successful. So when you believe there is a ceiling, there is a ceiling. But if you don't believe the sitting, don't have a sitting. So I think my job as a man is to break the ceiling for small business, for women, for anybody. We think everybody is equal. Everybody has the chance. And digital time is a chance for everybody. So don't worry about that. Try to change yourself try to adapt the future. So this is all we can do, and there is no other way we can choose. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Man, and thank you so much, Jakarta. Our next question is from Tokyo, Japan. Hello, Tokyo. Hello, I'll ask the local audiences who have questions for Mr. Ma, just a moment. Well, uh, please raise your hands if you want to ask any question. I uh, give the floor to you. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. And we help a female entrepreneur here in Japan, and we are an international organization. My question is, in Japan, there are still few um, people, female, in political situations. And um, in economic as well, we are very having a problem sometimes um, to go into economic situation. And we are wondering what is the solution that we can potentially do to, for female to be more active and more um, focused on um, this area. Sorry, um, did you understand the question? How can we overcome this situation in the question? Thank you. 
Thank you so much for your question. And um, today I'm very impressed that we have a great delegation from Japan. And Minister Jester, <clears throat> Representative Jester had a wonderful speech. I have a co-confidence in women, and I have co, -co, -co I should say, the completely confidence for the women leaderships in Asia, and Japan, and China. Um, I go to Japan a lot, and uh, there's, there's two things. Japan had a fantastic progress, lots of excellent things that we admire. There are two things that I always try to push. One is we have so many senior leaders. We don't see, when we go to conference rooms, we have a lot of senior, gray-haired CEOs and chairmen. I don't see a lot of young people. And when we go to the conference rooms, we see a lot of men, not enough women. But today, we are seeing the difference. We're seeing the change. We're going to see more and more young entrepreneurs in Japan. We see a lot of women leaders. And I think it's a challenge. Women leaders and women leaderships, women entrepreneurs, these are the challenges to the world. And Japan has the situation. But I think after I heard the speech today, I have a cold confidence. And I think Japan probably very soon will have a female prime minister. If that thing happens, it's a pride not only for Japan, it's a pride for Asia. And I think women, as I said, nobody can help us. It's only you can help yourself. If you believe you're different, you are different. And I think 21st century, I'm sure women will be the power. Women will be the energy of the development. And the world is going to be very difficult if the world is controlled by men. The world controlled by men is controlled by muscle. And the world should be controlled by wisdom. And the wisdom is from all the human beings. So I believe things are changing. And let me know anything I could help anywhere Anytime, any country. If women need me, I will be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Man. Thank you, Tokyo. Okay, our last question from Global Sections will come from Sydney, Australia. Hello, Sydney. Any questions? Hi. Hi. Okay. Mainly the Hangzhou, Mai Xianxiang. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and uh, Mr. Ma, we will definitely take you up on that offer. Um, we have a question here from our Sydney office, please. Thank you. So my question is, do you believe that um, companies, organizations, and governments should set quotas for women representatives to ensure it's more balanced? Thank you. Okay, good question. Women and government, uh, the government or companies have a quotas for women. You know, you have at least 30% of women uh, leaders, or uh, 30% of the uh, quarter that should be going to the women's CEOs. Also. Yes and no. I think, I think company should have the bottom line. We must have 30%. For like my company, last two weeks, because I'm going to retire from chairman, my, one of my requests is never below 33% of our company's employees. They should be women. I don't care how they do it. This is my request. But I would be much happier if we got a 50-50, if we got a 51. But I'm sure by the hard working of the old women today, by your efforts, by your confidence, there's one thing I worried about. In 50 years, the world should, would put quarters 
for men, how many men must be in the company? That is possible. Trust me. The world is always like this. We used to have women, and then men. And now something is happening. Women will be more, and I be happier. I will be much happier. Why I'm successful? When I go home, I listen to my wife. <laughs> When I go to work, I listen to my female colleagues. I listen to them. When you listen to the female colleagues, female leaders, you are listening to the humans. When you listen to the engineers, they are talking about money. They are talking about technology and products. But when you listen to the women, they care about people's feeling. And the world, we need people's feeling. No matter how strong your country is, no matter how strong your company is, if you don't care the world, if you don't care for the others, you will lose them. Trust me. So, I think I, every company should have a bottom line, but we encourage more. But the thing worried me is that we probably, in the future, men will say, "Can you give us some power?" So, Liu Yan, 100 colleagues, over 90 percent of women, you need a quarter for men. That will be more balanced. That's my advice. Thank you. 好，谢谢马云老师。现在机会来到我们现场。Thank you, thank you, wonderful. Now we are going to zoom in back to、uh, Hangzhou.、Uh, do we have any questions from the floor? We have time for two to three questions. Any questions? Well,、uh, maybe we can start off、uh, here because、uh, I believe the microphone is nearby. Hi,、uh, Jack. My name is、uh, Xie Li Juan. I am from uh, uh, Hangzhou. Uh, in 2016, I、uh, was in.、Uh, I retired in 55. Before that, I was a manager of department store.、Uh, I am 75 year old now, and、uh, I am three year older than the、uh, grandma that was on the stage just then. So people say, you know, you're seventy-five, and why do you uh, uh, still keep working? Why don't you just,、uh, you know, take it easy at home? Well, actually, my business, the business I'm running now, ninety percent is women, and also I、uh, donate most of the profit into charity, especially、uh, charity organizations for kids in Hangzhou. So no retirement for me. That is a no for me. No retirement, and I'm very, very happy to be here. Very happy to、uh, see you, Jack, because、uh, actually I know you a long time ago. In、uh, 1997, there was a book which、uh, featured you and me,、uh, and、uh, actually the book featured more pages coverage on me, covering me than you. And another thing. I'm very, very happy to be here, and I think、uh, our relationship goes、uh, way back.、Uh, of course, I can、uh, be—I am your older sister. You can say that. Well, people say, you know, you should、uh, take it easy at home.、Uh, no need to、uh, push yourself too hard. What do you think?、Uh, what's your comment on these、uh, these people? Well, thank you so much, my、uh, little old sister. Thank you. I am greatly moved and impressed. So that will be two more weeks before I retire from the role of chairman. But it doesn't mean that I'll stop with entrepreneurship. It doesn't mean that I'm going to retire. It's our destiny. We have no choice. But the world is still beautiful. We need to do more things. Try more things. It's good for us to see the world. So, from you, I see a very great spirit. Seventy-five, you are still full of passion and imagination. 
one important thing is that she's thinking for the others. She wants to do charity, and she keeps learning these books, these magazines, because women entrepreneurship is different from male entrepreneurship. You have to keep learning. When we st start with our entrepreneurship, we will get all very soon. So with Malaysian President Mahathir, I had a conversation. You are 93. You are still a prime minister. So what makes you have that energy? Because normally we believe it would be Jinson or something. He said no. He said that when you lie on the bed, two or three weeks after your muscle will shrink, and you will lost your strength. Same with your brain. If you don't use your brain, you will get old very soon. I think that when you are 75, when you're still doing entrepreneurship and innovation, that gives you a lot of new things for your family, for your children. It can give you a lot of new things. So don't stop with that. Do things you like. I will not stop, but I believe Alibaba is not my dream. It's just a part of my dream. I'm still young. I have many things that I haven't done anything. There are many things for me to do. So I need to learn from you. 75, you are still full of energy and passion. I hope that when I'm 75, we will no longer have global conference on women and entrepreneurship. We need to have a conference for men. Thank you, Ms. Xie. So I didn't thought about we're going to pick you. I know that you have a joint business with Jack Ma because she has made some contribution to rural education. Thank you. That side, I'm just randomly pick. So our staff, you can just pick anyone you like. There are too many. So can you give, thank you for giving the opportunity to Chengdu. Just now, Jack Ma's idea is very good. I also want to ask a follow-up question. We have many dreams many things we want to do, but we always believe we have limited efforts. I just want to learn from you because you are our role model. When you are doing things you like, do you have any tips for us to improve our efficiency? Thank you. I just uh, got back from Chengdu yesterday. I was in Chengdu yesterday. First, we have many ideas, but what's more important is action. So it's not that you're thinking about many things and in the evening, but you're still doing the same thing on the next morning. Nothing happened. Second, entrepreneurship, you should not look at too many books about the strategy of entrepreneurship. The most important thing is to choose the things you like to do. Second, you need to choose the easiest thing to do, start with. Third, you need to find people who believe in the same things and do it together with you. Efficiency is not on your own, it's on the team work. You need to be dedicated. You need to focus on one thing. That is the best way to improve your efficiency. I just want to do this thing. I only want to do this thing then you will be very efficient. You don't want to look at this and that. My suggestions to a lot of entrepreneurs, I also want to give it to all the female entrepreneurs. When you have 99 rabbits, if you want to catch a rabbit, you need to focus on one instead of picking this and that. You wouldn't capture anything. So do not think about things too broadly. Maybe one day it will be broad, but today, to be able to survive with the highest efficiency. So when females are doing entrepreneurship, and same with men, you need to do things you have passion about. You need to do things you like. You wouldn't feel tired. Do not do the things that are great, that are outstanding. Outstanding things are just on the book. So on the very first day, Taba didn't expect to do great things. 
on the first day, we just want to hope for the girls when they don't like their work. Everyone wants to open their stores. So 20 years ago, Chinese girls want to have a store, but it's too expensive because it's too expensive to rent a place. That's why we want to have an online stores. That's everything starts with that idea. Now we have a lot of people starting their online shops. People saying that opening shops is difficult. The things is because you don't have a passion for the things you are doing. Sometimes what you like is bored by the others, or when you have the passion to share it with the others, that will lead you to success. If you want to have efficiency, you need to be dedicated. You need to be focused. When less is more, when you are doing more, that means it will be chaotic. Thanks to Jack Ma. Let's put our hands together to Jack Ma. Please be seated. Thank you, and please be seated. Now you have a new title now, right? Wear a new hat that you wear. I am a WFF uh, ambassador. I'm committed to saving the uh, ocean, reducing plastic waste. Uh, for a cleaner uh, ocean environment, oceanic environment. Thank you. Uh, uh, do you have uh, any uh, takeaways from what we discussed uh, in the previous conversation? Well, I think Lu Yan mentioned that uh, when you want to do something, you just be committed and uh, throw all of your weight behind it. I think that's very important because if you don't do it, you never know whether it is possible. I think it's the first step that really matters. Well, we have also a haiku for you,、um, and I think、uh, with these topics, you can、uh, choose whichever, whatever you want、uh, at your starting point. Well, maybe we can start with the keyword meat. Indeed,、uh, you're wearing a new hat these days. And how did you、uh, become the ambassador of MMF? Well, I think it's uh, uh, indeed a、uh, kind of destiny、uh, in the making because I was a diver,、uh, athletic diver, and my life has been around water. We all know that the ocean is. Under a lot of environmental stress these days,、uh, while I've always had a passion for ocean, when we uh, visit uh, resorts, uh, visited re、uh, sea resorts in the past, we would、uh, we noticed that the sand and the、uh, water was all very clean. But if you look at news coverage today, you would see how Polluted, these places are, and they're stranded turtles where whose stomach、uh, contains plastic wastes. This is very horrifying. Well, in addition to、uh, news coverage, did you have any particular、uh, personal encounters that uh, uh, really moved you? Well, I think last year we were going shopping with. Uh, Uh, with my family members and my kids, so we sat all afternoon without any success in fishing. But while we were on our way uh, out, uh, my kids、uh, told me that we could possibly catch more、uh, waste than we can、uh, than we can fish. Indeed, I think even from a child's perspective, there's an intuitive sense that there's a lot of、uh, waste in the、uh, dumped into the ocean. I think this is indeed something we should attend to. That's very much right. As a mother,、uh, as a parent,、uh, we need to. Save the、uh, environment for generations to come. That's so wonderfully put. 
what's the next topic? Well, I would uh, go for choice. Uh, why? Uh, is it that you have choices or need to make choices all the time? Yes, uh, that's what we do every day. Do you have any uh, regrets that, uh, or any uh, choices that you made that you're particularly proud of? Well, whatever you choose, I think you need to be committed. And you need to apply your passion, and you need to try to accomplish Well, it is, I think, the uh, commitment that uh, that we we uh, that we make, and uh, there are no regrets, right? Indeed, I think if you don't take the first step, you'll never know whether you'll be successful or not. I think even if you fail, it doesn't matter because in your life. You run into many, many things, and every failure is also an opportunity for you to learn valuable experience. Yes, indeed. For a very low-key person such as you, I think uh, uh, it is really uh, the, uh, some courage that that you. Uh, the courage that that you have uh, brought uh, to the stage with your presence is, I think, I'm committed to saving the earth and the environment and the ocean. This is something maybe we speak all the time, but uh, uh, we say all the time, but not something that we usually put into actions. I think with small behaviors or habits, we can really make a difference. Well, uh, maybe Jing Jing, you can share with us some of your good habits in your life, where you think it makes a little bit of difference. Well, I think when we are out, uh, uh, I think uh, we often forget to bring reusable uh, bags. That, that I think are all sitting in our drawers, but uh, you, uh, we often forget to bring these bags out when we go shopping. Well, and when you check out, you uh, inevitably uh, use more plastic bags, right? So I think a little habit will go a long way here if you put your reusable bags in your in your bag all the time or maybe uh, if you drive your car you can uh, bring some extras in the uh, trunk of, of the car just to make sure that you always have a reusable bag at your disposal I think just small habits like these can make a lot of difference indeed uh, so if you're uh, now you're at Hangzhou and you see the disposable, uh, let's say, uh, te uh, toothbrushes, do you use them? No, I actually, I use our own, let's say, uh, slippers, toothbrushes, uh, 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 our own, let's say, cream, uh, gels, shampoos, etc. So you bring everything, yes. Uh, and I think as a mother, it's very important that you build good habit for your uh, children. I think it's difficult to change a person, but a ha habit, a good habit uh, developed can go a long way. So if the kid knows how saving the environment is the environment, or how uh, classification of waste is important, then I think uh, they don't need to think about it when uh, they become uh, older. It becomes part of them. Yes, so what do you do when you try to uh, develop your, your kids? Well, I think it boils down to education. 
because if you teach your kid something, they learn quite uh, rapidly. They pick up things quite rapidly. So let's say you're at the beach and you see uh, some uh, garbage and you uh, ask the kids to uh, pick it up. And next time, uh, he will know that no garbage on the beach. So, or let's say my boy is at the kindergarten and the kindergarten holds uh, sports events every year. And we wanted to use the events as an opportunity to develop environmental sense. It used to be all uh, small bottles of water. Now, later we uh, brought uh, big uh, containers of uh, uh, water, barrels of water. Uh, by the way, I bought these barrels from Taobao. Uh, so I brought the uh, barrels to the uh, sports event uh, which supplied water to the kids and made a difference. Indeed, uh, I, I think there are many parents who are very uh, concerned about or, or who, who care for the uh, kids' privacy all the time. But I think you bring your kids all the time to uh, the field, right? To uh, even uh, use and attend all the events, right? Well, I think uh, my husband is in philanthropy, and uh, my uh, kids are also getting older, and I want to teach them what many things in their life. Uh, come from, let's say where the rice come from, where the things they use come from. Therefore, they'll be more connected with society at large, and they'll be able to become uh, more committed to making a difference. So what's your expectation for your kids? Um, you want them to be Olympic champions, also. Well, honestly, no, because I was an athlete. I, I know firsthand how hard it is. So no vacation, no holiday, and it's training day in, day out, uh, 365 days a year. So as a mother, I think the thing that I really want out of my children is really just good health and just happiness. Well, that's wonderful indeed. So health, good health, happiness, uh, and then uh, enjoy life. Okay, maybe we can ask Jack to pick the uh, next word for us, next topic. Uh, I, I, I would like to pick failure. Well, I think Jingjing, Jing, as an athlete, you're no stranger to this word also. Uh, can you share with us one of your uh, experience of failure? Well, my athletic life spanned 20 years, and failure was part of that life. I think failure is what uh, makes you learn. Well, maybe I can give you an example to illustrate this point. For the longest time, about five years, I would say, you know, uh, I, I was at the top of the world. I was number one with every, every event. But, uh, you know, then I started to uh, cut some slack on myself. I, I felt, you know, if I don't train that hard, maybe I can uh, still keep my uh, championship without a problem. That came to a stop when I, I lost. And you started to see people saying, well, Guo Jingjing uh, has uh, lost her mantra um, or magic. Well, I, that was a, really a warning sign for me. And I started to think, uh, uh, tell to my, uh, I started to say to myself, you, you should never cut slack. And I, I cannot continue the kind of pattern that I had. I need to make a ch difference. Uh, I, I need to make changes. So I think failures like these are 
opportunities for you to learn and to achieve greater success. Well, uh, let me give you an example. Also, I think the 2000 Olympics, do you think it was a great challenge or failure for you? Uh, what was um, on your man mind at the time? Well, it was my second time Olympic opportunity. And I felt that uh, as a female athlete, as a diver, people often assume that this would be the last time of your career. And I was committed to winning the championship at the time. So I attended two uh, events where I felt that uh, uh, I, I had a winning chance. So championship was the word that was on my mind all the time and I started to lose, uh, lose my focus so I became uh, really uh, out of focus and I uh, gave up the two championships and I felt that I maybe I should quit and even other people said I should quit quit well so what kept you there well it was my coach. Uh, I really wanted to thank my coach because uh, the coach told me that it's maybe your mental issues that are come in the way of your success at this time because I think the kind of mental stability is super important. As an athlete, you know, you can uh, dive uh, 10,000 times successfully in your training, but when you're on the stage, you just uh, get cold feet or you choke. That that happens all the time. So my coach uh, encouraged me to try uh, further. So my attitude has changed. In the past, I was trying to get the championship. That's why I practice. But I think that it's actually I want to realize my dream and my goal, and that's why I did it. I focus more on the process, so how I'm going to train myself. I need to take every training as a competition, and I would take the training as a training. That's why when I won the championship in Athens, a lot of people were asking me, so why didn't you cry when you received the trophy? A lot of people expect me to cry because it's just my third time in the Olympic Games. But I felt at that time that it's the process that matters more. I actually I have accomplished my goals in my mind. I just need to be the best of myself. So champion is not a burden but a direction. So I think that you burst into tears when you memorize those things. So how would you feel? Do you Saying it's very beautiful and very tough. So can you bring some tissues? So let's get, give her a round of applause. Actually, how should I put it? Coming back to the topic, as I have said, I chose to do this. Although my use is different from many people here, every day, so we have three dots as one line, training field, dormitory, and canteen. So every day is like this. So I also find happiness out of the training because that is something I love to do. I like it. That's why I would use my passion and efforts, although it's boring, but Every time when I was practicing or challenging, when you completed one after another challenge, so you would feel a sense of accomplishment. I think there's a saying, so when people are calling the beautiful days, those are beautiful only in your memories, but when you are really experience that, it's still very difficult. For young girls, I think you need to experience the hardship before you can have the beautiful memories. So in the end, I want to choose a word for you. I want to choose gift. 
I also want to want you to say something to all the women entrepreneurs. I think for every woman entrepreneur, first you need to make the first step. When you make the first step, you will know whether you will have the op opportunity. If you don't make the first step, there's nothing to talk about. And also, you need to be persistent, just like me. I also reach my current situation because of my perseverance and efforts. And don't be afraid of failure. We are always saying failure is the mother of success. There was a lyric saying that you cannot see the rainbow before the rain. So. When you have the passion to do something, don't be afraid of failure. <laughs> so, when she says, "I'm making the first step," same thing when you are on the swimming board, before you can have the beautiful diving. So, our last word is gift. Gift is very warm words. A compliment is the best gift. So, Kenneth Four is also here on site with Kojinji. Let's welcome him. I think children is also a gift to the parents. Actually, gender is a gift from life, and ocean is a gift from the world. So, gift is precious, but also we treasure the gifts. So, let's treasure the gifts provided to us, those people and things that are good to us. I also want to thank Guo Jingjing for your sharing.